In this video, we're going to take a look at how to do an instantaneous rate of reaction with respect to one of the substances within a reaction. So here we have a figure, um, same figure as when we did the example of the, uh, of the average rate, uh, except this time we're going to focus on instantaneous rate. Remember the instantaneous rate is at a specific point in time as opposed to um, over a time interval. Uh, average rate was simply calculating the rate, uh, the slope of the secant, whereas the instantaneous rate is calculating the slope of the tangent that you draw onto the curve at the point that you're interested in. So in this question, we want to know the instantaneous rate of appearance of oxygen at 250 seconds during the decomposition of nitrogen dioxide gas. So we have to choose a proper curve as usual. Um, and here we have our curve, the oxygen curve. Um, and we want to know what the instantaneous rate is at 250 seconds. So we find what that is on the curve right here. There's our 250 seconds on the curve. Um, and what you're going to do is you're going to draw a straight line that passes through that point, but does not go through the curve. So it really only hits the curve at that one point and that's it. So it's already drawn in for you in this example. Um, your answers may vary a bit depending on how well you draw your tangent. Do your best to get kind of as close to that curve as possible, only really hitting um, that one point and no other point. Uh, and then really to find the instantaneous um, rate of reaction um, at that point, all you have to do is find the slope of this line that you drew here by choosing any two points that will be on it. Make sure they're not points that are on the curve because your line really should not be um, uh, touching any other points in the curve. Theoretically, you could touch this point here um, since that's the only point it touches, um, but it can't be any other point on that curve specifically. So um, this one's a bit difficult to estimate, but the estimation is sort of done for you. The uh, change in uh, y is over here, and the change in x is over here. Um, and so this graph was kind of nice because it would have been very difficult to tell what the points were on the slope. You can always estimate, though, um, if you'd like. So, for example, if I'm choosing a point, let's say, um, over here, you're at about uh, 3, 325, and you might be at about 0 0.0, 0, 0. 0. 0.003. Uh, seven about, maybe a little bit less, maybe about 0 0.0035, something like that. And then you choose another point, maybe somewhere over here. And so if you choose that point there, you're at about, let's see, you're not quite in the middle. You're almost there, not quite in the middle. Uh, each jump is about 50, so um, one a bit less than 175, so maybe 170 about, 170. And then over here, we're at 0 0.0025. Um, so you can always do that there. So you have your difference in height. Um, and then if you're doing this, you have, let's say we said here we're three, 325 and 170. So if I was using this, I might be a little bit different than what the book provided, but let's just see what we got. So if I want to find the slope of that tangent based on the dots that I selected, the points that I selected, I have um, my 0 0.0035 minus 0 0.0025 over the 325 minus 170, and my estimation may be a bit off, 0 0.0035 minus 0 0.0025 divided by, so... That's going to be equal to 0 0.001, uh, that's moles per liter, over the number of seconds, the difference, the change there, 325 minus 170 over 155 seconds, which gives us so 0 0.001 divided by that there. We get about 6.4 times 10 to the power of negative. Um, negative six. So that's the value I get there based on my estimation. It is very tough to estimate on this graph. You might have done a better estimate than I did. I would say this is a little bit too far off. Um, but essentially when you're doing this work, you'll be get you'll be given better graph paper so you can make better 
estimates with the increments that you see here. Um, and hopefully it'll get you closer to what the actual answer should be. Let's go ahead and redo this with the results provided in the from the textbook here. So we're just gonna use the delta Y provided there. So we're gonna have our, our instantaneous rate is gonna be the delta Y, so Y2 minus Y1 over the X2 minus X1. So the one provided in the book is 0 0.0003 uh, moles per liter over um, 75 seconds. And that's gonna give us, so 0 0.0003 divided by 75, we get 4.0 times 10 to the power of negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Negative 6 moles, liters, second. It was the same thing here, moles, liters, second. So again, my estimate was a little bit off just based on this. It was kind of difficult to tell. Um, you do want to practice estimating though. So for example, my trick would be right in the middle would be about, um, so if we're going up by 25 here, 0 0.0025, I should say. Um, then in the middle, would be going up by, um, you know, 12.5 or 0 0.000125. Um, and then you can do little increments like that to make um, other more reasonable estimates. So here, when I made my guess, I was assuming I was roughly in the middle, but I'm a little bit less than that. So I put 0 0.0035 rather than 0 0.0037. Maybe it was a little bit lower, a little bit higher, so that's why my estimate was a bit off. Um, but either way, um, if there's something that's difficult to tell in terms of um, your estimating of points, I typically would provide you with some data like they did in the textbook here. Um, otherwise, I would, give you, I would give you a reasonable graph paper where you can make reasonable estimates, and I would expect some variation because the estimates are a bit tough to do on, on, on images like this here. But at the end of the day, what we did here was calculated the instantaneous rate of the reaction um, at this specific point here for oxygen. You can try that out for a variety of other ones. See how your estimate compares with what's given in the textbook. Um, for your uh, final answer. See if you can get closer and closer than I did. See what you would have estimated at those points and see if you get closer to the actual answer than I would. It's not too far off, but it is far enough off that it does make a difference in terms of the rate there. Not in the exponent area, but in the coefficient area over here. So now you know how to calculate the average rate of reaction and also the instantaneous rate of reaction.